If you would remain standing, turn in your hymn, or your, I'm sorry, your pew Bibles. We're going to be reading two scripture passages this morning, the first out of Matthew 1, 18 through 22, and then we'll pick up Luke chapter 2. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the, prophet, what the Lord had said through the prophet. Now Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius, the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. You may be seated. I couldn't help but name this sermon something about ugly. <clears throat> so the ugly becomes beautiful. And no, I'm not going to pull a string and all of a sudden I'm in a tuxedo, but that would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? But the ugly becomes beautiful. Today, out of Matthew, I want to talk about Joseph. Oftentimes, during this time of the year, we're focusing on Christ, as we should be, or Mary, and, and what was required in all of her. But the ugly becomes beautiful. And today, I'm going to talk about situations and circumstances that we might be in or get into. Maybe it's no fault of our own, or maybe it's decisions and all that we've made, but we end up in an ugly situation something that we may have never expected, but in the end, it is something absolutely beautiful. Now, Joseph, as I look at him, here's this gentleman who was in Matthew chapter 2 called a righteous man, right? A righteous man. He was, in that time, they would be betrothed to one another, and he was betrothed. And he was doing everything as he should be. God called him righteous, saw him as righteous. So much so that he was put into a situation where the girl that he is betrothed to was found to be with child before they had been married and come together. Kind of getting into a potentially at points an ugly type situation, especially back then. 
So here's this gentleman who has done everything right. God considers him a righteous man. He is in the process of found out who his wife is going to be, and life was looking good. Life was looking good. He was a carpenter, right? He had learned a trade, and he was getting ready to start his family. And then he finds out that the one that he is to be betrothed to is with child. No fault of his, right? Not his, not, I, I, I didn't do this. But being a righteous man, he was trying to figure out how to get out of the situation or move along. He cared for Mary so much so that he was going to, he had made a plan that he was going to set her away privately. He wasn't going to make a public spectacle of her because he was a righteous man. And God knew that. Now see, we've all been in situations or circumstances, not exactly like that, but situations that can get ugly and they are ugly. And, we're like, and, we, and we do, we do this. We walk, how am I going to handle this? What am I supposed to do? You get to thinking about your options. What are some different ways that you could handle it? And oftentimes we list our pros and our cons, don't we? Maybe I'll do this, 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 or this. Or maybe I'll do this, 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 and this. Sometimes our decisions in that, we're willing to sacrifice some of our integrity, aren't we? Maybe I'll just not tell this person what they really should hear, but I'll, I'll do something else to try and make it easy on everybody. But Joseph was a righteous man. Now, in our situations, we've also kind of thought about different things and we also can be like, you know, how, how much easier would it be if God would send an angel and just tell me what I'm supposed to do? Right? If God would just send a writing on the wall, a picture in the sky, an angel to come before me and say, Ian, this is what you're supposed to do. I, that would be so much easier. Joseph. Had an angel show up. The things that we ask for today happened. And this is what the angel says. I just lost my place. And the angel, of the, here we go. <laughs> angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid. Okay, that's step one. Don't be afraid. Take Mary home as your wife because what can, is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, don't be afraid. Take Mary because God's in this. That's what the angel's saying. She'll give birth to a son. You're to call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. Joseph wakes up and he does just what the angel tells him to do. Now you've got to imagine in that time the ridicule that he is going to face by following these instructions. You see, sometimes when we want an angel to show up and tell us what to do, it is not normal. It's not. Because, see, God has a way of taking that which is abnormal and putting himself on display for everyone around to see it and understand who he is. Because, see, this boy who was born of a virgin with a father who had faith saved us from our sins. You see, the abnormal is exactly oftentimes where God is at work. So the situations that we're in that are ugly, it can be personal relationships that we have. It can be a work situation. It can be a parenting situation. 
It can be a church situation. Sometimes they're ugly. But you see, when we allow God in the middle of it to do what He's going to do, He trades, as Isaiah says in 61, our ashes for beauty. That's what He does. The question is, will you trust Him through the process? You see, Jesus didn't die for 33 years. Joseph lived with this. He lived with Jesus being 12 years old, walking into the temple to sit down with the priests and ask them questions. And all of the kickback that he got, because you know what, there's no 12-year-old boy that should be in here talking to us this way. Joseph and Mary get upset when they finally catch up with him, and they're like, Jesus, what have you been doing? Well, I've been about my father's business. Okay. Joseph, still being the father of Jesus and following through what he was told to do by an angel in the middle of the night, followed through. You see, something that was potentially an ugly situation for Joseph as a righteous man in a culture that would not at all and, sh- and never did accept what took place turned into something beautiful. It's interesting that Matthew, as he records this, as he, we finished up right in, in that first passage that we read, all of this took place so that the, pro- that the Lord that the Lord said through the prophet. That prophet was Isaiah. Okay? That prophet was Isaiah. So let me read a little bit of Isaiah. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord, of the Sovereign Lord, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim that the year of the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve. That's the same passage that Jesus stood up and read. But see, the angel is, is telling Joseph what to do so that what the prophet Isaiah had written would be fulfilled. And it was. Because Joseph stepped into what God told him to do. Church, that is courage. That is courage. And it turned into something beautiful. Earlier this week, I was talking to a good friend of mine, and I was reminded of a time in my life where things were ugly. Ugly as in within a week's time, Julie had lost her job. We had gotten uh, a a large cargo van, had run a red light, and we got T-boned sitting in a two-seater sports car that got knocked across two lanes sliding sideways, and I lost my job in less than a week, really. And when I lost my job, I was in seminary at the time, and I was working at a place that ran three shifts. They ran 24 hours a day. I was running second shift because I had to go to school during first shift. It was a production plant, and I was doing well. My production numbers were up, and so they wanted to move me from second shift to first shift. But I couldn't do that because I was going to school. So I sat in, my off, in the office of, of my boss and explained to him what was taking place and that, you know, thank you so much for the promotion as they saw it and thank you so much for the raise, but I can't take it because I need to stay in school so I can only work second shift. And he knew the situation. He knew that, that Julie was out of work. He knew that we had just wrecked our car. And unfortunately, while I was talking to him, he was inebriated. And he said to me with a smirk and a laugh in his voice, 
well, I'm sorry that I'm going to have to let you go, and it looks like your life is falling apart. Okay. So I, I got up, and I walked out, and, and I sat in my, was sitting in my truck, and, and I'm like, my life is falling apart. And the Lord said, no, your life is falling into place. That was powerful wisdom I was given that day. And as a matter of fact, I can look at my life right now and where we are and all that God is doing in and through our family, and I can go back to that point and go, I traded my ashes for beauty. I traded my ashes for beauty. It's not what it seems. Whatever the world is telling you and whatever situation that you're in and the concern and the worry that you may have right now, it is not what it seems. You see, Jesus came to give life and to give life more abundantly, to give joy, to give hope to you, to you, no matter where you are. You see, your situation is nothing but a platform to put Jesus on display if you will be courageous and let him. If you will be courageous and let him. We can be in the middle of these tough situations and these wonders and, and, and wondering if or how or when and go, God, send me a message. Send me an angel. Send me the answer. And the answer may not be something that you have thought of up to this point. It may not be on your list because oftentimes God is outside of our thinking because he sees further down the road than we could ever see. And in the moment that we decide to follow whatever the angel may have said or whatever the message may be or whatever the direction it is that God is giving you, Whatever it is, he has this in mind of everything of who you are that he has created you to be. And you are now on this journey. And you're walking this path. And Joseph took his wife in, and he married her, and he took her to Bethlehem. You know, just because he took her as his wife doesn't mean that they lived in a palace. My goodness, his firstborn son was born in a manger. It's not always our picture perfect, but it is certainly God's plan if you have surrendered. And you can accept that. Because there's power there. Because there's power there. When you're following his path, there is power you have his favor, you have his blessing, you have him on your side. And he will show himself strong. Church, whatever situation you may be in, the thing that you may look at and go, man, my life is ashes. Trade it in. Trade it in. Because beauty is waiting. Because beauty is waiting. And there is hope in that. There is joy in that. Because you will not be the same. You won't be. And people will see him for who he is through you. But for you, there's hope. For you, joy is waiting. Peace that you need in abundance. Because he is who he says he is. Be courageous, church. Be courageous. Ask for the angels to show up because you know what? They just might. But messages will come. Direction. God's not going to let you flounder. But follow him. And whatever may seem ashes, whatever may seem ugly at this point, God is the God of redemption. He's our God of restoration. 
and he will take whatever it is that you see as ashes, ugly, and a failure and make it beautiful because that's how he sees you. You are. You're beautiful to him. I want to pray for you, and then we'll close. Father, Lord God, I just come before you as your servant. Father, you see the hurts and the pains. God, you see the sicknesses. God, you see the worries. Things that feel like they're a million pounds that could never be moved or, God, the questions that are running through people's minds of how is this ever going to work? Father, you hear the cries of the hearts of people who want joy. They want happiness. They want a wonderful life. God, I ask you to answer them. Father, I, I call upon the power from on high to fall down upon us and upon our needs and upon our worries. And I ask those worries to be crushed. And I ask your peace to abound. Father, I ask you for healing upon those who need it. And Father, upon those who need, Father, their tongues loosed to be able to praise you for the things that you've done in their lives. God, I ask you to do that too. But God, I ask you to meet us where we are in the middle of our need, in the middle of our hurt and our pain and our ashes. And God, I ask that each one of us here have the strength and the courage to trade those ashes in for your beauty. God, I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.